Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Clix Beetle GT. You know, a while back I did a review on the Clix Beetle Pro. Now, the new GT adds tension adjustments and reinforcing metal plates for the ball bearings. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at this Clix Beetle GT, or the CXBT GT, that's what they're calling it. And we use the blue one here, you can see the logo on there. And it's kind of a bluish purple, kind of in between, I guess, depending on which way the light is striking it. And right away you'll notice there's a difference from the Pro. I already did a review on the Pro, and you can see the Pro doesn't have uh, any metal plates in there. <laughs> And the GT does, right? These are stainless steel plates. So they're capturing these ball bearings at the end of these little tunnels or holes, or whatever you want to call them, so that the bearings are no longer being captured by the PLA alone. Now, these are made of what they call PLA+. Plus. I'm not sure what the plus stands for, but I guess that means it's a little bit tougher than normal PLA. But having the stainless steel plates in here, I think is a very good idea. And it's going to definitely improve the durability and the wear time on this unit. Whereas, yeah, here it's just rubbing against the balls and the PLA itself. Not that it didn't work. It did. But, yeah, anybody could see, I think, that it's worth having the metal ones in there. So, we get a red also. And, yeah, that's what that one looks like, in case you were wondering. The blue is a little easier to read the name, though. All right. Now inside of these, I'm trying to think which one, I think the red will show better. There are, here's my pointer. Obviously the ball bearings and metal plates, but there's some indentations left on the side of these. And I think you can see it right there. Or at least you can see the ridges of it. So there's two raised areas with a groove in the middle of it. On this side and on that side over here. All right, the purpose of that is kind of a guide so that when we're sliding it down the shaft of the shifter, that it guides it properly and you don't you know rub it back and forth and cause any kind of scratching on the shifter shaft as you're lowering it down and it helps keep everything centered while you're in the center position but that only lasts a certain amount of time and yeah these are going to wear in fact my the one that i used here which one was it this one okay the one that i used you can see it has the same thing but you're not going to be able to tell this but i can tell just by looking straight down in the light that one side of these is actually a little bit lower, worn a little bit more than the other side. And it probably has to do with the arm angle on the shifter because you're always pulling on one side or pushing on one side more than the other. And I think that that will vary from person to person. But I'm going to try to show you the difference here. They're not quite as pronounced, but I, again, I don't know how you're going to be able to see this. The contrast is no good on this as far as trying to show you detail because it's all one color, right? It's all blue. But yeah, if you uh, can see it down there, let's try it this way. You can still see that they're there, I think, but not much. And the ones over there are still there too. Yeah, you can see the little raised areas. So they do wear down. And once they wear down, the original tension on your shifter or how hard it was to push back and forth is going to change as they wear. And it was designed to do that. Now, but it, before we couldn't do anything because the Pro is, you can see the glue on that, right? On the, around the, let's see, maybe this one's a little better. There it goes. A little better look there. It has some glue on it, so they don't want you adjusting the tension on these, right? But the GT, we can adjust the tension. And yeah, it, again, I'm surprised to see this because it's easy to, you have to be careful and understand what's going on inside when you do adjust the tension because you can cause problems by adjusting the tension. So yeah, they went on a limb here to let you guys do this. <laughs> but remember, if these, thing, these slots start wearing that are in there, or something. Again, can't see them very well with this red on red contrast. But as they start to wear, the tension is going to recede, just like it did on this one. But now we're going to be able to adjust the tension on the balls themselves to compensate for that. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how one of these is put together. Let me get my 4 mil. This is a 4 mil hex set screw in here, or grub screw, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to take it out. And you have to be careful when you take these out because it's under spring pressure and there's a ball bearing in there and you don't want things flying around, at least especially when you're shooting a video. All right, there we go. And this is the little set screw that goes in there. 
You can see it better in the white contrast. All right, and it's nice and flat. Notice how it's flat on the end there? Instead of rounded or a tip or anything like that, so that the spring set seats on it a nice flat surface, which will keep the spring rate more constant, I'm sure, amongst all the springs that are in just one of these units. I'm going to pull the spring out. Speaking of the spring, ball bearing will stay in there. And that's what the spring looks like. Again, just a spring. <laughs> but I'm sure they tested a lot of springs to come up with the right one. And we'll go ahead and let the ball bearing come out. And there we have the ball bearing. Right. So I'm going to put this back in now with the spring. And go ahead and put my set screw on the tip of my unit here. Now they do give you a four mil wrench here with your kit over here with the little extras you get with the kit. We'll talk about those in a minute. And just kind of push the spring in at the same time that you're screwing it in. Simple stuff, really. Now, how far should I put it in? Hmm, I don't know, but I don't want to bottom it out. Right now, you can see the ball moving. Give you a little shot here of it. There we go. See how the ball moves? Now, if you're tightening this up, which you can do, you don't want to bottom this, you don't want to fully compress the spring and bottom it out against the set screw and the bearing. Because if you do that, and I'm going to go purposely do that, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it for you guys. And that's probably got it right there because it's, it's, I could feel the stiffness of it. So now I try to go in there and press that ball down and she is not going anywhere. Yeah, so this is not a good situation to be in because imagine your shifter shaft going across that and whacking that ball and the ball can't go back anymore. Yeah, that's going to cause problems in the long run for the durability, not only of this, but also the durability of the shaft that's on your shifter. So yeah, that's not what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and back this back out. Now, how far should I back it out? What happens if you get lost, right? <laughs> and you don't, you don't know where you want to go. Now, the instructions say turn this an eighth of a turn on each one of these. And of course, you want to do both sides and both screws the same way because you don't want one side to have more tension than the other. So what happens if you get lost, though, and you want to come back to the default factory tension settings? That's what these guys are for. They actually give you two of these. A little 3D printed. Oh, well, the grain's going to show up there. But it's a little 3D printed looking. It looks like a wrench when I first saw it, but obviously it's not. It's a gauge, a depth gauge. So we put that on the set screw like that. And then we'll go in and you can see that it's a little bit lower than uh, maybe this one over here. Let's check this one. Yeah, see, this one's more flush, I think. Give it my white t-shirt there for background. This one's just a little bit, just a little bit higher, depending on the angle that we're looking at. Maybe it's perfect. But this one, obviously, you can see it's lower, right? So I know I'll have to come out a little bit more to get it where it needs to be, and I'll just turn it. And I think that was like a half a turn. So you don't have to turn these much. And now, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely where I want to be there. Okay. So it's a depth gauge to bring us back to stock so in case we get lost. But just remember, an eighth of a turn is all you need to change the tension on these balls, according to the instructions. So don't just go hammering it in and say, oh, this thing's not stiff enough and put it all the way in. And then it's going to be stiff enough then, I guarantee you, because then all the balls will be locked. And because we have these stainless steel plates in here now, right, holding everything in and the balls are striking against those, yeah, it's not going to give at all. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not a good thing. I was going to pull one of these plates out, but unfortunately, they have glued them in. See the glue there? So they poured a bunch of super glue down in the grooves there to keep it from coming out. I actually took it apart and tried to pry one out, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't coming. And I wasn't going to destroy one of these just to get a plate off of it. But yeah, I think it's a great idea that they have the stainless steel plate on here like this now. Let's talk a little bit about the clamps. And this is the clamp, the original clamp that I got with my Pro. And the clamps are changed now. You don't get this with your Pro anymore. You get these little black ones we'll talk about here in a second. But this wasn't much of a clip, as you can see. In fact, you, you, you could bend it a little bit to get it on the shaft, but you can see there's no closure on it. And you can also see <laughs> uh, what happened to mine. And as you can see, it's kind of uh, cracked there, right? But the funny thing was, my this did not come up any. It was still sitting down where it should inside the shifter over here. So it didn't come out up any. But people have had problem with these coming up. So if you have a problem with this coming up, obviously, and with these kind of clips, that wasn't going to work. Now the new clips come in, and they have these grooves or teeth on them. You see the teeth there? And these are not, these are some kind of a plastic. They're not PLA printed, by the way. So, yeah. 
So when I squeeze this together, these teeth are going to lock. We have a set down here it's going to lock, and then a set up here that's going to lock. So it's in, yeah, it's going to be very secure, I think. So when we put that on there, we're going to take a pair of pliers and just kind of zip it together, right? Now, even with these, people have had problems with this coming up from what I'm, what I'm told by the guys over there at uh, Nolito 3D. So they suggest you could actually put two of these. Now, I know they put two of these in each kit. So you can actually put one like this orientation maybe and then put another one like this if you wanted to and then clamp them together. But I think the problem is also in the technique you use for installation. And we're, gonna, we're obviously going to install one of these GTs in here so I can use it. And you have to be careful with the grease. You have to put grease on this. And we'll talk about that more in the installation. But if you put too much grease on here or you, you get it slopping all around while you're putting it in and you get it on the shaft, that's the important thing. When you get it on the shaft where your clip is going to be going, you need to get that grease off of there or this clip is not going to be able to hold. As you might imagine, grease and clips don't work well together. So, yeah, I'll talk about how I do it once we get to the installation process. So I've got four of these clips because I got two GT mods and yeah that's about all i guess as far as what's new here and what we're looking at and so yeah we might as well just go ahead and get to the installation so let's go ahead and get our gt mod installed now i'm going to use the red one because well i think it's going to be better visually when i get it in there and you could get a purple one this purple blue it's more purple i guess the more i look at it on the lights but yeah it's a crapshoot on which one you're going to get. You could get a red or you could get a purple. So it depends on the batch that they're printing. So I went to the website and looked at it and it said, yeah, there's no selection as far as what color you can get. And I think they say that on the website too, that you get what you get. So be advised of that. Don't be too surprised if you get like a purple and you wanted a red or something. That's what you wanted. All right, so let's go ahead and take this TH8A apart. Very simple. I've done this a lot of times here at the SRG. First, we remove the shifter knob. And again, that's just a little threaded piece on the end here. So it's very easy to get this guy off. I'll put him over there. Well, I'll put it over here. How about that? <laughs> All right. Always have somewhere to put it when you have your dish ready, right? Okay. So now we have four socket head cap screws in here. These are 2.5 millimeter heads on here. So that's what you'll need. A 2.5 millimeter wrench to get it off. And pretty simple stuff really here, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and... Take these off you bear with me real quick and i've taken these apart a few times and yeah it's pretty easy to get these out the first time you take one of these apart it may not be because it's still it might have some thread lock on it from the factory or something like that so yeah but after you've done it a couple of times they go in nice and easy and there's not a lot of stress on this from what i can see so you really don't have to put loctite on them every time you put them back in right that was easy and that's for the metal gate plate. I'm going to pull that off. So yeah, simple to get the metal gate plate off. We'll put that over here. Now we have this plastic gate cover thingy. <laughs> so this is what we're going to have to take off next. And this is even easier because we've got one Phillips head in there and we've got one up here at the top. Okay. The thing about this is when you start pulling this off, this is where you got to start being careful especially if you've never done it before, there's going to be a wire on this little switch here. And that switch is obviously, so when we turn this thing, uh, the, the cover on that, it tells the shifter to tell the computer or your PlayStation or whatever you're using that this is now in sequential mode, right? And we're going this way now, like that. Okay, but we're not going to do that. But we are going to pull the plate off and there are two little black wires in there that go to this switch and that's what you have to be mindful of. So, with that said, my Phillips out. Go ahead and pull these off. And all this stuff comes off really easy. Very simple to do, so don't be afraid to do it. See if I can get my screws out. Oh, and I caught both of them. How about that? Usually one goes flying somewhere. All right. So this is where I got to take it easy. Now, there's also a cloth piece down here. Let's see if I can get it to come up. A little cover in there. It's a little piece of cloth with a plastic ring that rides around the shifter shaft itself. And now I'm going to kind of pull this up and take a look at where I'm at. Now there's going to be some wires in there and there they are, see, on that switch. So what I usually do is just kind of lay this down and see which way the wires are going. You guys can see down in there. 
So there's my wire that I'm concerned with. And it's going down to a plug actually on the circuit board down here. And if you, you know, mess this up, you pinch it when you're putting back in or something, you can repair it with some soldering and, and put it back together, maybe even extend it if you wanted to. But I'm gonna obviously gonna try not to do that. Right, so what I usually do is take this cloth piece and put that on the top like this. So this is what you really have to get off. That's what's causing the tension. Once we get this off the shaft, we got plenty of maneuverability as far as in here. So I usually just go ahead and stretch this cloth as I'm watching the wire. I don't wanna put any tension on that and just kind of pop it over the shifter like that. Then I can kind of swivel everything up. And there we have it. Couldn't be easier, right? And I'm just gonna kind of let it sit there like that. And again, just when you're doing this, you just wanna be mindful that, yeah, you don't wanna mess any of this stuff up. So now we'll get the grease out and prep this thing for installing our GT. All right, so we're gonna put the lubrication and, and actually install the Clix Beetle GT. But before I do that, I did wanna mention that in just, just now when I took this apart, the wire in here, you see how much wire I have here? If you open this, the first time you open this, you're not gonna have this much to play with, right? Because it's gonna have a zip tie down inside of here, down inside, that you're probably gonna have to get down there and cut off to get enough slack out of this wire so that you don't, in other words, they, they kind of tuck it away down there and zip tie it, which is a good idea because you don't want to get it in the shifter. But if you put this down carefully when you're putting it back together, it kind of can fold back behind here. And yeah, I never really saw a reason to reinstall my zip tie. So just be mindful of that when you say, hey, gee, I'm trying to pull this off and Barry pulled it off. He had all, all this wire hanging out there. But yeah, that's because my zip tie is long gone. <laughs> okay, and I'm not going to put it back in. All right, so the orientation of this is going to be this big flat piece here is going against the front where the plastic's going forward, all right? So inside of here, again, I'm just going to kind of try to support this little plastic piece with my hand here. There we go, so we don't put too much tension on anything. But you can see right here on this metal, the back metal part, that there's two little screws hanging out of that. Let's see. See that there? There's one over here and there's one back on the other side there. See those two screws? And because they're attaching something on the back here, right, of this metal piece that is part of the support. So you have to be mindful of those screws and you, when they made this, just like they do on the Pro, they've actually cut some slots in here. See these slots? And that's so it'll clear those screws sticking out. They know those screws are there. But on this side, we have a nice flat piece. And that, it's going to go up towards this way, all right? So you want to get the orientation right. And if you get it wrong, you'll know right away as soon as you start putting this thing in. So not a big deal there. All right, so let's get to the grease. Mine's already had grease in it, so uh, I keep wiping my hands off here. This is what I'm using, and this is not a commercial for slick oleum. There's a lot of good lubes out there. I just have a big tub of this, and it's been I've had this for years. And yeah, you want to use a decent grease. This is a, a synthetic. And I know it doesn't affect uh, or degrade like rubber seals and stuff like that. It's the original reason I bought that before, you know, putting in carb wheel bearings and packing the bearings and stuff like that. The seals and stuff involved in some things. So yeah, I'm going to use this stuff. But again, use whatever is good that you have around. Some kind of a molly lube. I think that's what they say in the instructions. But yeah, just good stuff, man. You don't want to get the bad stuff. Now I'm just going to dip some of this grease on here. And... I'm going to put some down where I know this is making contact first. All right. I'm also going to put some on the Clix Beetle too, because if you just put it on the Clix Beetle itself, some of it can is obviously going to be left behind as you push it down. And I like to have a little bit in there so that I can, as it pushes down, even though I have some on here, it'll become pushing it both ways pushes up and pushes down, so it squeezes it out and you have plenty in there. I'm being very careful here, <laughs> trying not to get any on the shaft. And that's also what we want to do because we're going to be lubing again once we get this thing installed. So, yeah, let's go ahead and put a little right there. That should be good. And I'm going to be switching these because I've had grease in there before and it's getting dirty. Right. So now we get the lube on our GT. And it's pretty easy here. We're just going to get some, put it on there the top part. You see what I mean? When I start pushing this down, this stuff's going to want to squeeze up like that. So I always put a little bit more on the bottom because I know that's going to happen. Then I'll go around the back and we also have two pads there, right? 
what's left over for our clearance grooves for our screws. Let me go ahead and grab some more. You can be liberal, but you don't need to gob this stuff on, you know? Because if you gob it on, then you're going to have a greasy mess and it's going to get all over your shaft. And I'm, I'm purposely trying not to get too much on the shaft because I want my clips to hold very well. And again, that's what I said in the first section that I was talking about in the first segment of this video. You want to be mindful of this stuff as you're putting on. It's going to make your life easier as you go to, as you, as you move along and then it won't slip on you. So now we've got lube on this side and we've got on this side. I've got some down there. Now it's just a matter of sliding this bad boy on here. And remember, we're going to try to push the shaft in between these two pieces, the raised pieces, or just center it really is what you're doing. And it might be a little stiff to go on at first, so just kind of wiggle it back and forth and it should, there we go, finally get in there. And then once it clips in, you want to make sure that you're looking down in here and you see the shaft coming through the middle there, all right? You don't want it coming off the back or something. So I'm going to, I know I'm right where I need to be, so... All right, let's move it around on me a little bit. There we go. See, I got grease on me. <laughs> so again, I'm going to wipe that right off because again, I don't want to get it on the shaft while I'm pushing, messing with this thing. You will get greasy doing this, by the way. So don't even think that you're not. And that's just part of working on cars though, right? If you ever worked on a race car or your own car for that matter. So this should just slip right down in there. And again, I'm watching my, my wire here. I want to be sure that that's not getting any kind of binding on it anywhere. All right, everything's looking good so far. Then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get it to squeeze down. And there we go. I'm putting two thumbs on it here to kind of push it down. And I'm going to push it all the way home to where it seats, and there it is. And now it's seated down in there. All right. So now we've got to put some grease down in here, in this section of it, where the shaft is. So I want to get some grease down in here on both of these ball bearings, right? And what I'm going to do is try to push the shifter. There we go. On the other side first. And that gives me some room to get down there, as you can see, with my Q-tip. and put some grease on there. Of course, the whole thing is moving a little bit, so it will do that when you're, using, when you're doing it this way. So prepare to have it move and don't be freaked out by it. <laughs> All right, so that's a bit much. <laughs> see, I'm about to... Gob it on there, and that's what I was telling you guys not to do. You want to be, like I said, I want to make sure as much as I can that I don't get any grease right in here because that's where my clips are going. Even though it's going to be greasy anyway, you know it is. I mean, it's just almost impossible not to get the grease in there because I'm going to be liberal in here. This is where all the action is going to be. And I'm not just doing it on the bearings. Remember those two indentations I was talking about? I'm going down into those too. So I'm, I'm getting everything I can in there. Now I'll put some more in there. So if you take smaller pieces and go in with the grease, you don't have to worry about it. You know, big gobs are just going to spread everywhere because it gets on just about everything. All right, so now I've got it in there the way I want it. I think that's good enough. But what I want to do now is shift it back. Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to put some more in there on the other side. Yes, we make sure you get grease everywhere. To make your... Flix Beetle GT, or Pro for that matter, if you get one of those. Have a nice long life. There we go. That should do it. Easy enough. Okay. Grease is on. Let me go ahead and put this back. I'm going to push down on this again. See, it did come up a little bit when I shifted it. I'm going to keep my finger on here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty tight, actually. So I'm looking where the grease is, and it looks like I got some good grease contact in there. And then I'm going to take my rag, and this is I'll go ahead and center it again, push everything down, and you can sell. Let's see, let me show you a close up of this. See how the grease when you put it in there, and you start using it. See how it's it has raised up, and it's already where my clip needs to be. Not good, right? But that's part of the installation process. So what I'm going to do is get the excess off first, and then I'm going to come back and get it good and clean. And I'm gonna get the excess off the front lip over here. Anywhere I see some excess, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of there. Just kind of wipe stuff around. There we go. All right, so 
We've got our excess, or at least most of it, wiped up. And I'm going to come back and show you how I clean mine so that I can ensure that these clips here can get the best grip possible. Now we have everything wiped up. I went and shifted it back and forth a couple times. And you always want to make sure that you press this all the way down and then wipe it clean again because when you shift it, it tends to rise up on you. And that's why we're going to be using these clips here. But now that I have it at that point, what I want to do now is come in with some of this. I use denatured alcohol instead of isopropyl because the denature doesn't leave the same kind of film that isopropyl does or any because it's kind of purified. And I'm just going to go in there and wipe that shaft down best I can because again, we're trying to make sure that we don't get any grease where we're putting those clips. We want good engagement. Yeah, and I can see some of it came off there. And some of it actually got into the shifter. <laughs> All right. Can be a little messy getting this done. And again, every time you shift it, you have to look at it again and make sure that the grease has is not riding up anymore. And it looks pretty good there to me. So I'm going to dip this one more time. I just want to be sure, as best I can anyway, to get it as clean as possible. Not that hard to do, but it's going to, you're going to, it's going to pay off in, in the end here once I get my clip on here and hopefully they won't come up on me, right? And I think I'm going to go ahead and put two on there. Let's do the whole shaft while I'm at it. Okay, that should do it. So here's the clips. If you saw before, they've got these little grooves on them. Pretty aggressive, really. And you want to make sure, again, you take both your thumbs and press down on this. See how it went down just a little bit? And now I'm going to go ahead and put this on here like this. Okay. And we come in with my pliers, and I'm going to just kind of squeeze it down with pliers and see how tight I can get that. And you just go ahead and squeeze it until you can't get it to click anymore. And then I'm going to kind of feel it. Boy, that is tight. I'll tell you what. I don't even think that you would need um, another one on top because I know that they said that that might be one way you might want to consider going with one on these on the top. But I think, i tell you what, I don't see that moving, man. That is tight. I can't pull it back up at all. So that's the result of giving a good clean before we actually put the clip on. So what we'll do next is get everything put back together, obviously, and then we'll go ahead and mount it and see how it feels. Now I have the TH8A mounted to my P1X and I did a simple mount here because obviously I'm not going to be using this all the time. I have other shifters I use, but you can see it's a very solid mount just by taking one piece of 40 series profile. I put a corner bracket on each side on this double 40 series profile that P1X is used for their shifter mount. And I even put one down there underneath just to stabilize everything. And you can see I have the clamp in the forward position so that the metal pulls against this profile when I'm shifting. Because I use, usually I have more uh, torque when I'm doing downshift and I'm pulling towards me than I do when I'm pushing it forward, right? But again, that's variable as far as when I'm using it. So yeah, nice solid mount here. Uh, everything looks good. It feels good. And yeah, I'm going to go over to the close-up camera now and show you some shifting that I'm doing here. All right. Now when you shift back and forth, you can feel that tactile feel of the shaft going through those bearings, or the balls rather, not bearings, and the spring balls. So yeah, it feels good. It has a nice tactile feel to it. And if you don't push it in there, it won't go all the way in. You gotta push it, <laughs> which is great. I mean, that's what, that's what I like. You know, you gotta put some force on it to get through that, those balls, right? And yeah, it feels very good. It's, much stiffer than the stock TH8A, so obviously your shifting is going to improve as far as that feel goes. Similar to the Clix Beetle Pro when I used that, again, right out of the box, it was a much better feel for the shifter, but there's something different on the, on the GT when you do it slowly between the Pro and the GT, and I'm not sure if it's just tolerances as far as the 3D printing, uh, you know, the, the tolerances between each copy that they print, or even the tolerances between different TH8A shifters themselves because you know, it's not the best quality uh, control on these shifters uh, that you would have like in a higher end shifter, but they still get the job done. 
but yeah, it feels really good, and it just it just feels a little bit, I don't know, stiffer or thicker or something <laughs> than the the Pro does. But I'll tell you this: once I get up to speed, and I'm actually doing some heavy shifting on this when I've already been driving it for put a few hours on it. Yeah, once I start slamming around like this, that kind of it kind of goes away the, the the distinctive differences between them, and then I'm just kind of like feeling like the Pro could be in there too, as far as I know. Doing a blind test, I probably wouldn't be able to tell when I'm doing it fast and slamming them around like that when I'm shifting. So, and that goes with a lot of shifters. So once you start doing that, these little nuances when you're doing this and it's static kind of go away. Right now, there is one thing this Clix Beetle does raise up a little bit, and so did the Pro. They they come up about. It depends. I'm sure it depends on again on the sample you get. Uh, but then this one it, and the other one that I had, or the Pro that I used. They come up about three or four millimeters. It would just kind of rise up from the metal part that it sits on down there. Even with two clips on it, did the same thing. And I took the two clip double clip off because the double clips was just the stack was too high and it started grabbing the cloth boot here. And I didn't like that because it wasn't going to last long, I'm sure. So I just left one on there. But just by doing this, sitting here and talking to you like that, I can actually go in now and put both my thumbs on the clip through the cloth here, obviously, and push down. And I can feel it go down. See it go down? Even the shifter shaft itself went down a little bit. Did you see that? It kind of went down. So again, there's some loose tolerances in the mechanism of the shifter by itself even. But it never came up high enough to interfere with the side-to-side -side motion. Now, if you guys looked at the installation and closer look, there's grooves on the back of this Clix Beetle that accommodate those screws that are penetrating that plate and coming out and sticking out too far really is what they're doing. But the grooves are there for that. But they're also low, the grooves stop low enough so that we can still do this, right? So it's not interfering with those screws that are sticking out like that. So if it came up too high, then you wouldn't be able to do this because it would interfere with the screws. It would catch them. So that would be over, your day over, if it came up that high. But I never had it do that in the hours that I put on this. I've probably got about three or four good hours on it slamming it around. And it still, as you can see, is working pretty good. Now, of course, I cannot tell you how long this is going to last, how often you have to replace them, because I just can't test them for that long, long a period of time. So that's anybody's guess. But I, I kind of think with the new metal plates in there, that this is going to wear better, I think, than uh, the one, the Pro that doesn't have the plates. And of course, this one's adjustable. So if it does start getting a little weak on you, you can at least you can go in and tighten up those set screws and tighten up the tension on it whenever you want to. So it took uh, obviously to uh, certain limits. We can't tighten it all the way or it just won't move anymore. But yeah, I'm happy with the way this is, is acting. And it's just one of those things that once you're on the track and you're using it, the little ball bearings that we feel like this when we're pushing it in, you, that kind of goes away because you're just kind of slapping it around like that. But the stiffness doesn't go away and the tactile feedback doesn't go away either. So there you go. Now all we got to do is get into the driving segment and we'll talk about it there. So here we are at Sebring in the Lotus 79 and of course this is iRacing and we're using the 3D Wrap Authentic Lotus 79 wheel which is kind of fun just to get into the cockpit with this setup and do some heel and toe shifting even though the gearbox on a Lotus 79 as some may point out that yeah you just have to lift your foot off the throttle to shift you don't really have to use the clutch for upshifts but downshifts you do have to use the heel and toe technique and I just do it the way I'm doing it here because it keeps me in practice for the car that, I, that I'll get into once in a while to actually drive hard and in real life and yeah it uh, helps me keep my muscle memory up to speed. Anyway, so this is really about the TH8A shifter and how it responds to the Clix Beetle GT mod and of course going from a stock TH8A to this with the mod in it is a big difference. It's very noticeable it's, it's, it's a thicker, denser feeling when you're making your shifts and not, not like obviously a proper gearbox would feel, but it's much better than the stock TH8A, in, at least I think it is. And you can feel when you're sitting still you can, and you're rowing through the gears, you can feel those ball bearings engaging and releasing as the shaft passes through them. Uh, but once you get up to speed like this and you're, and you're really focusing on your driving, that kind of goes away. You really don't feel the ball bearings doing that going in and going out and snapping back. Uh, it does feel uh, like a more precise shifting though, as far as the shifting, this when you're actually rolling it through the gears, 
it just gives you a feeling of I mean, it, I'm, the looseness is gone, I guess is the best way to say it. The original looseness of, that you feel in a TH-88 is completely gone. It's, it's much smoother when you make your shifts and it, like a denser feeling shifter, which helps you memorize where the shifts are based on having something that doesn't move around on you or feel loose and have a lot of flex in it. It takes some of that flex out of the shift and it gives you more tactile feedback when you're making the shifts. And that's what it's designed to do, right? end of the day that's what we're here for and yeah it it's almost I, could, I would say it's almost like just having the pro in there once I'm up at speed I really don't notice a difference in the feel um, I could probably go in and change the ball bearing tension here maybe it'd be you know a little bit stiffer feeling but it feels pretty good the way it is and I don't want to put too much tension on the balls because uh, you know obviously it's more wear and tear on everything when you do that if you don't need to of course it's all personal preference at this point you know, some people might even like the shifting action to be lighter than what I have it in. So again, it's nice that you can adjust it on the GT, whereas you don't on the Pro. But at the end of the day, they kind of feel the same. Of course, the GT is going to be more durable. I'm sure it's going to last longer as far as the ball bearing sections of it. Because remember those stainless steel plates in there uh, holding the balls now that, uh, yeah, that's got to be uh, something that's going to last longer than just having uh, the balls resting up against that PLA+. Plus material in those uh, tunnels or tubes that we drop the ball bearings and springs into so anyway uh, yeah it's it's a winner i mean as far as you know, improving the uh, feel of a th8a now i did stay with one clip on the locking clip for this uh, i did put the second clip on there but the, really the stack was just too high and it was grabbing the cloth uh, the center plastic piece where th that goes over the shifting shaft it was grabbing that and uh yeah i didn't like that at all it was it was pulling it around too much so the stack was just too high so you have to run it with one clip or risk doing that now also this uh, clicks beetle did raise up a bit but not so far that it would affect the shifting in the h pattern because if it came up too high i wouldn't be able to go over to the left or right because the the way the cutouts work on that uh, clicks beetle you know, it would be too high and they would block that. So it never got so high that it interfered with anything, but it did move a little bit, even with the clip on and even with me cleaning everything up with denatured alcohol. But at the end of the day, it still worked. As you can see here, I, I didn't have any issues with it. And I put some, some good hours on this uh, shifter and kind of, kind of wore me out because <laughs> as you can see, this rig is, when you're in here running like this, it's a, uh, it's a workout, no doubt. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I think they've accomplished what they set out to. It's, it's basically going to be an adjustable, more durable unit than the Pro was. So yeah, Click Speedle GT. Now we'll just go ahead and get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Click Speedle GT. You know, I did a review on the original Click Speedle Pro a while back, and it was an overall favorable review as the Pro did what it was advertised to do. Now we have the GT version, and I think it's easy to see the improvements that have been made over the Pro. We now have stainless steel plates embedded in this PLA Plus 3D printed unit. This offers a stiffer assembly that the ball bearing seats against, while at the same time should be a more durable solution. The new GT also brings a tension adjustment feature to the table that the Pro does not have. You do have to be careful when adjusting the tension as each of the four set screws must be turned in the exact same amount. Really not that difficult if you take your time and only turn the screws an eighth of a turn each time you do it. When driving the Clix Beetle GT, it reminded me of the Pro that I had tested before. It brings a very noticeable improvement to the tactile feedback available from the stock TH-8A shifter. And this translates to faster muscle memory training and less missed shifts. The GT does have a very similar feel to the Pro once you are up to speed and using your shifter in anger. <laughs> Adding a tactile feedback element that to me far exceeds that of the stock TH-8A and what it has to offer. If I were to pick between the Pro and the GT, I would go with the Clix Beetle GT. I think the extra features it brings to the table are worth the price difference over the Pro. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.